One of the most divisive devices in the United States is the Electoral College. For those who don't know, whenever there's an election for the President of the United States, the popular vote doesn't quite decide the winner outright. Rather, each individual state, and Washington, D.C., of the United States is given a certain number of electoral votes, and they vote on the winner. Think of it as, like, points. They're distributed in a winner-take-all system in which the popular vote winner of each state wins that state's electoral votes. Part of the reason this is so controversial is that there is a minimum number of electoral votes that each state has no matter how small their population is. So as a result, several states essentially have their votes count more. This has led to several elections in which the person who did not win the popular vote ended up still becoming president, and multiple times that president has turned out to be a rather divisive one. With how important the office of president is, the system brings up conversations about what level of democracy or voting system is best for the United States. There are plenty of other videos that go more into depth on the issues of the Electoral College, but this isn't going to be one of them. I thought it'd be fun, or horrifying, to imagine a world in which other countries have the Electoral College. Now, some countries in the past have used Electoral College systems, several today still use them, and Georgia is expected to adopt one in 2024. But for this video, we're going to imagine countries that currently do not have an Electoral College and pretend that they're going to adopt one. If they don't have a president, just pretend that they made a new office of president. To decide how many electors each state, province, or region will have, I will follow the structure of the American Electoral College. For the United States, the reason why the minimum number of electoral votes is three is because the number is simply determined by the state's number of Senate seats, which is always two, and the number of its House of Representative seats, which can be as low as one. So the number of seats will simply be the number of upper house and lower house seats for that country's legislature. Simple enough. So let's go through some of the major countries and see how horrifying this turns out. Canada. The first thing to note is that Canada's Senate does not give all the provinces an equal number of seats like in the United States, nor are they even elected. Rather, the Constitution assigns their number of Senate seats. But in the end, Canada's provinces of Ontario and Quebec have so much of Canada's population that when you make the electoral map, they clearly have the lion's share. Considering that there is a pro-Quebec party called the Bloc Québécois that has a decent chance of winning Quebec, assuming they even would run for a president of Canada, that could maybe balance things out a little bit? Hypothetically, if this system had been in place in the 2021 Canadian election, and the same candidates ran for president instead of prime minister, and people voted the same way, this is how it would have turned out. Brazil Brazil's National Congress gives each state three senators and a minimum of eight representatives for their lower house called the Chamber of Deputies, meaning every state has a minimum of 11 electors. This means we get an electoral map looking like this. Brazil has a two-round presidential system. You could theoretically leave the Electoral College for only the final round, but regardless, if we were to map the results of the 2022 Brazilian election, both rounds were nearly identical, with only one state flipping. And in both situations, while it is close, Bolsonaro would actually have won if there had been an Electoral College. This isn't too surprising when you remember that an Electoral College always inflate the vote worth of lesser populated states, several of which where Bolsonaro had a lot of support. The United Kingdom With the United Kingdom, we have a unique situation in that the constituent nations of the UK are so extremely lopsided that this would make Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland matter even less electorally than they currently do. It would also be weird due to the fact that the House of Lords in the UK is not proportioned between the countries like a Senate is. So for the purposes of this map, it'll just have to be each country's number of seats in the House of Commons. That results in this extremely lopsided map in which the only way to win is to, well, win England. But maybe this can be fixed. Between 1994 and 2011, the UK had regions for England for administrative purposes. So what if for the Electoral College, England is divided into regions? Well, in that case, Johnson would still have had the most, but not a majority. And when no one wins the majority, the lower house votes on the winner. So assuming that everyone would vote along party lines, since Tories had the majority on election day, Johnson would become president. At the very least though, including regions in a hypothetical British Electoral College would help balance things out a little bit. Germany. 
For Germany, their electoral map would look like this. Since Germany has even more parties that win Bundestag seats, vote splitting would strike and give Schultz quite a victory. I also assume that since the CDU and CSU always coalition together that they would just run a single joint candidate. The European Union. You know what? Now that the British are finally out of the EU, the EU decides to become the United States of Europe and establish an office of European president. Who's gonna stop them now? Yeah, I know, it's silly, but go along with it. How would it look if every member state of the European Union became a state of Europe with electoral votes? Well, the EU does in fact have a legislature, with the European Council and the European Parliament, so you could still make an electoral map, and it would look like this. Now, the most recent EU elections still had Britain in the EU, but let's just say we include the same results but don't include Britain. This is what it would look like. Japan. Japan has an interesting system in which some of their seats in the House of Representatives do not represent a specific prefecture, but rather a whole region. There is a good reason for this, and you'll see once I pull up the map. Excluding those special seats, we'd have an electoral map looking like this. However, in Japanese politics, they have a lot of parties, but one party in particular, the Liberal Democrats, consistently get 35-45% to 45 of the vote at any given election, and the other parties are so small that they are never higher than the Liberal Democrats. This is fine in the parliamentary system where you can just coalition, but in a winner-take-all system, this would result in every election being a Liberal Democrat landslide. If Japan didn't have their mixed proportional parliamentary system, they'd basically be a one-party state. Australia For our final country in this video, we have Australia. Kind of like Canada, most of Australia's population is concentrated into its states of New South Wales and Victoria. Australia's Senate gives their states 12 seats each and their territories two, which would give us this for an electoral map. Based on Australia's 2022 elections, assuming their ranked voting system would still be in place for a presidential election, it would look like this, giving Albanese a victory over Scomo. So yeah, in conclusion, there's a reason why most countries don't use an electoral college to elect their leaders. The electoral college in theory tries to balance things out by giving smaller states more representation in the decision making. But the problem is, no state is a monolith of political opinions, and as long as there's still a winner-take-all system, the big states are still going to ultimately be the ones that decide the parameters on how to win, and only a few ideas could ever hope to possibly be represented in an executive office. In some cases, some of the nations would become practically one-party states. So whether you like the system or not, it does have serious implications with how elections would turn out. But either way, I hope you found this video interesting. I'm Emperor Tiger Star, and I'll see you guys next time.